You are the temple of God. We are studying and we are also seeing some important materials that are in the temple that is connected both to the physical and to the spiritual. But our goal is that our temple will be of a spiritual nature because that temple will be the same temple that will be raptured to God and when we go to heaven you will have the same temple. Because the Bible says that you are the temple of God and God wants to live with you or in you. So when we go, when we see Jesus, when we see Jesus, we will be like him. So the temple of God, which the scripture says you are, will be the same temple that you will see in heaven. So let's go back to the study of that temple and find out. First of all, for a, for a couple of weeks, we said that the temple of God have got three compartments. The first compartment how is the, the, the compartment called the outer court. Say the outer court. The outer court. Now, when you enter the outer court, you will find the altar, the brazen altar, where the animals are sacrificed. When what I told you was that sin was sacrificed and Jesus was also sacrificed for you. So the Bible says, as many who receive him, to them he give power to become the sons of God. The Bible also says in 1 Peter, I think chapter 3, verse 18, there about that, that he has washed our souls by the blood. Amen. We also learned that after the basin of altar or the altar of basin, you find a basin lava where water is in that lava. And we learned that that water helps us to wash. The Bible says that we should wash ourselves continually. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Last week also we got to a place where we got to the second compartment. Say the second compartment. The second compartment. It is called the holy place. Say the holy place. The holy. Okay. We found the holy place. And within the holy place has got certain compartments, certain materials as well. Now look at me, don't look at anything, and look at me. It's got certain things in that compartment. We found out that there are, in the holy place, we have the table of shoe bread. We have the table of shoe bread. Where the table of shoe bread will have the bread of life. The bread that has to be displayed every day. The Bible calls it, Jesus, when he was teaching the people, said that, give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. And Jesus said in John that I am the bread of life. He also confirmed that he is the bread that comes from heaven. And whosoever eat of this bread will not die. Amen. Amen. So we realize that the bread is the word of God and we must eat this bread continually. In fact, there is a scripture in 1 Corinthians, I think chapter 11, that says that the, 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 the bread of life or the communion that we eat is blessed or bring us blessing. Hallelujah. So when we eat the bread of life, 
of the word of God, we receive, we receive blessing. One blessing in the word of God is that it gives you direction. Say it gives you direction. Gives you direction. The word of God brings you health. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 says that my son attend to my word. And not, let them not depart from your ears. For it is health for those who find them. Amen. So we also learn that this bread of life, which is the word of God, brings us health. It says that it is medicine. The bread of life, the word of God, is medicine as well. So in the temple, or in the temple of God, these things must happen continually. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, today I want us to look at also another important word, or another important aspect of the things in the temple of God, which, is, which can also be interpreted in a different way, although it's the same word of God. Say the word of God. Yeah. Has so many facets. Okay. The word of God can be represented in many things and in many ways. God allowed his word to be presented to us in different ways so that we will not miss any of the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the temple of God, these things are very interesting. In fact, in the more I study this temple of God, that which is called the one in the wilderness, the temple in the wilderness, which God allowed Moses to do, the more I am fascinated about the word of God that has to be in me. Are you aware that the Bible says that in the new Jerusalem or in the new place where the Christian will go, there will be no more, there will be no natural light, but God himself will be the light? God himself can be the light. In fact, the Bible says that he is the light. Friday, we, we had a revelation when we came to the meeting. Those who didn't come, I shouldn't be sharing this revelation with you, but for the sake of love, I will do that. <laughs> I love you so much that I can't keep this thing away from you. We learned that the Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Isn't that true? The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Isn't that true? And the word was light. Now, the first thing we learned on Friday was that the, go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. That is a, a, very, a, a very fascinating word. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't take myself away from that way when I heard it. It says, in the beginning, just... In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, mm -hmm. and darkness was upon the face of the deep, mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh -huh. And God said... Let there be light, and there was light. Amen. And we learned that the first thing that was ever shown to the creation was God himself. Amen. God says that I want to create this earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and the world, the world was void. And then God said, let there be light. And therefore, it means that the God told the creation, look at me. I am the one who you will come out from. Or after he made the earth, he told the earth to look at him. So are we indeed 
we are in the image and in the likeness of God when we see God. Amen. When you see God, you can see God in you. And God can see himself in you because he is a light that lives in darkness. Some people, this is a bit confusing, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So today we want to go to the temple of God. Let's go back to our diagram and look at what the temple of God was. And this was in the beginning of the journey of Israel. And then the fourth thing that we are going to look at, the fourth thing. The fourth thing we are going to look at is called the golden lamp's tongue or a, 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 a lamp's tongue. In the holy place, there is something called a lampstand. Now, the lampstand, what does it do? It has candle or light on it. And the holy place is dark. It's a dark place. But the, the only thing that illuminates the place is the golden lampstand. Say the lamp. The lamp. Now, in the day when Moses wrote this thing and God showed him, there was not this fluorescent light. You understand? Mm. So God allowed them to see the light in a different form and shape. It was not captured into bulbs like this. It was a, a real light. Hallelujah. Mm. So what does that light do. You will find out that light gives us direction. Say direction. direction. When you are in darkness, you, you are stuck. Mm. 